Video games have been linked to violence since all the way back in the late 80s to early 90s, with games such as Doom and Mortal Kombat featuring enough blood and gore to raise more than one eyebrow among parents and government officials. I've been playing video games as a hobby for 12 years, and I decided to do a bit of digging into the effect of certain mature titles on younger people. And I discovered that a lot of M-rated games aren't always rated for the same reasons. Several M-rated games use the medium as a way of discussion or commentary on the real world. Of course, most of them are only rated M for the blood and language, but what does the rating really even mean? Well, it means mature. It means the consumer must be mature enough to understand the themes and content of the product. In fact, I would even argue that many M-rated games are okay for kids as long as a parent is there to help them understand what they are seeing and disassociate the media from reality. This is why the cause for acts of violence brought about by video games might actually be the absence of a strong parental figure in a younger person's life. As mean as it might sound, kids are dumb, and the role of the parent is to nurture and guide them. A study done in 2016 showed a staggering 86% of school shooters grew up in broken or dysfunctional homes. So why are the video games still to blame? In another study, conducted by The Guardian, one common argument for a negative effect of gaming is that small harms can accumulate over time. If a player ends every game slightly more aggressive, then, over long term, that might add up to a meaningful change in temperament. But the study finds no evidence for such an, a culmination, and in fact finds evidence pointing to the opposite direction. Studies consistently find that the long-term impacts of video games on youth aggression are near zero. And there it is. Guys, it's not the games, it's the parents. For most of this, I've been talking about video games purely as an entertainment medium, but what if there's more to it than that? What are some ways video games can do as much good as they are claimed to do harm? The year was 2012, and I had just turned 7 years old. I decided, I decided to stay the night at my grandpa's house, and on the, way, on the way there, he told me he bought a new game for my PS2. It has Mickey Mouse and Donald and Goofy, he said, and 7 year old me couldn't have been more excited. Fast forward about two years later, I leave to go to my mom's house for the weekend. And when I got to the living room, I saw something I almost couldn't believe. It was Kingdom Hearts 2, the sequel to my favorite game. Turns out my mom knew how much I loved the first game and found this for me. I played the game for three days without sleeping during the following summer, further cementing an emotional association with this game. It got me through so many tough moments in my life, from being abandoned by my mother to the death of my grandpa. Kingdom Hearts as a franchise, and video games in general, are capable of illuminating that light at the end of the tunnel. That's why video games are so important for emotional and mental toughness. Many studies even show a direct correlation between hand-eye coordination and time spent playing certain video games. Thankfully nowadays people are way more open to the consumption of video games, just like the movies, books, and music before. After enough time has passed, it'll become a non-concern entirely.